Oh, hello there, Jack. I was wondering if you could do me a solid. I need a lift. Sure, Caesar. Where you need to go? Well, I, I need to go to Australia. Can you help me get to Australia? Australia? Are you out of your mind, Caesar? What are you talking about? Well, uh, I need to get to Australia, and I was, your, your new job there, I think you could help me. New job? What are you talking about, Caesar? Well, your, your jacket. You're a pilot now, aren't you? No, just me. Same old Jack, just a new jacket here. Hello and welcome to Caesar's Snack Sandwich. Today we're taking a look at B Protocol. Now, B Protocol is a backstop protocol liquidation system for other protocols. Now, um, before I get into explaining what it does and what are some of the benefits and what are some of the future things coming, I would like to mention that this is a sponsored video via the Creator DAO. And if you are a creator looking to get paid for creating content, you can check out the link in the description. Or if you are a protocol looking for some marketing help, you can also check out the same link in the description. So back to P protocol, B protocol. Now, like I said, B protocol is a place where they're trying to, well, they are, they're doing this and that what, that what they're doing is that they're allowing better liquidation systems for borrowing platforms. Now, basically what they do is they, they, they cover up, they add their, their contracts to these other protocols and help them with the liquidation process. Now there's a lot to it, so uh, let's go down here and look at this part here. So this is basically the high levels overview system of what's going on here and what can uh, what's happening, okay? So let's say there's a lending platform here, this would be like Compound or they do say Ave in the future or MakerDAO and liquidity and so forth. So this is the actual protocol that, that people would normally use. And you could go to Compound and you could use Compound if you want. But what they're asking you to do is use P Compound via the B protocol. And the only major difference, the only extra added risk of using B protocol would be that you are adding one layer of smart contract risk. and. Um, it's proven to be pretty tight and like I haven't heard of any exploits or anything, but keep that in mind as you uh, decide what you want to do. So how does it work? Now, the main idea of B protocol is that they want to be able to help liquidate. And, and uh, as a reason, how do they do this is they get priority on liquidations inside these protocols. So. It's, it's pretty strange, like they call it priority on liquidations, but it's, it's a little bit uh, misleading in, based on my understanding. You, instead of like, they don't like talk to like the protocol and ask the protocol to change their contracts and say, hey, give B protocol priority to liquidate, that that's not fair, right? But what they do is they change the, the, user's, uh, per, uh, the user's perimeters or the user's uh, experience at the, the data level. So how, how can I explain that? Let, let's just go through the flow and you will understand it basically. Let's say the user wanted to take out a loan versus ETH and get some die on MakerDAO. And this is a liquidatable position if the, the ETH were to go down in value, right? So instead of going to Maker, he would go to B Protocol and he would deposit his funds through the B Protocol contracts directly into the Maker DAO contracts, borrow the DAI, and the DAI would come back through the B Protocol to the user. So let's say he put in, like, let's say, let's just throw some numbers out there. Let's say he put uh, $100,000 of ETH in and he took out, I don't know, let's say something, say $50,000 worth of um, DAI and then took that DAI and went to, to play DeFi and didn't really come back or, or just forgot about it, right? And then let's say ETH is going down and it's getting close to, to being liquidated. So what B protocol would do is it would take its uh, liquidator people, the people who have signed up to B protocol to be liquidators, they would pay off a little bit of his debt and then monitor his position. And when his position actually goes to the, the, the place where he would have been liquidated on Maker, then they liquidate his position. So then they take all the money out of, 
out, they just basically liquidate him. They take all the money out of make or die. So they pay off all his debt, take all of his collateral, give him back whatever is owed or leave whatever his whatever is owed. They basically follow the rules of compound. However, they monitor his position for him and repay his debt so he doesn't actually get liquidated on compound or on maker they liquidate him so they tell him he's liquidated and now they own the position uh, if this makes sense to you so that liquidator can then you know take all the funds that are out in that position do what they want to do with it such as like you know convert it back to their original currency or whatever their, their let's say they want to hold ether or something like this Okay, now, as you can see, they have this thing up here, this jar, right? And one of the features they talk about up here is you can see that like, the miners usually get quite a bit from liquidations, normal liquidations, but in B protocol, the user gets it. So, so why does the miner, why is this shift happening here? Now, if you think of it this way, B protocols, is there's, there's no liquidation auction, there's no gas war, there's no like, like normally when there's a liquidation, there's a there's a gas war of like who's willing to pay more to like take who's willing to give up some of the profit. These are liquidator people, right? Who which liquidator is going to give up more profit to pay more gas to get priority on the transaction being being executed, right? But here, because they pay off the debt they there's they don't there's no right for other liquidators outside the system to liquidate b protocol so they just basically tell the user he's liquidated and then they own the position so there's there's no bidding war they, they don't have to pay a huge amount of money for gas and because they don't have to pay that huge amount of money for gas they save that gas money so then they then they take that money that extra money that they they, they would have given to the miner and they put it into this jar. Now a jar is kind of like a vault. And so if a user has been like actively put some money through B protocol for quite a long time, he has a score because you know he's a user of B protocol and his user score is basically allowing him to then get some of these proceeds. So if you put your money through B protocol, B protocol will take care of the liquidation for you. Uh, you will still get liquidated under the same perimeters However, you also get this kind of, if you do, if there is some liquidations on other people or anyone gets liquidated, some of that profit is shared with all of the users of the B protocol. Now, this is just a quick overview of what, what how this liquidation system works. And uh, if you really want to know more, I would suggest you to check out the docs. They're, it's pretty good. You should read it and try to understand it a little bit better than the way I'm explaining it. But I think that's, that's a pretty good overview. But there is a version two aspect to it that they are, they are launching. And let's go to the docs to talk about what the version two is. So if we go to the top here, um, the version two is this this problem that they're seeing about automatic market making and the issues with uh, with uh, lending platforms. Lending platforms have a hard time uh, leveraging up to like the crazy amounts that centralized exchanges do because there's uh, there's there's slippage on the the markets where they're going to trade. So, for example, if you think of it this way, let's say I have let's say I liquidate your position and I, I get ETH. But I'm holding DAI and I use DAI to liquidate your ETH position. I want DAI. So I'm going to then take, have to take your ETH to the market and sell it for DAI. Now, if it's like 200 million, then if I sell 200 million worth of ETH at the market, then I'm going to get a whole bunch of slippage. So I'm less likely to liquidate a position at as 250 million because of the slippage on the, the automatic market making. So what they're trying to do here is they're trying to give, the, the solution that they, they're, they're asking here is that they're going to give users of the B protocol the ability to deposit money and use that money as a pool of funds that can, in the event of like a large a large liquidation be used to perform these liquidations by the liquidators. So there's a big pool of money from all the users and the liquidators can then take from that money and use it to perform these large liquidations and then slowly convert it back to the, the token that they want, right? The original token and so forth. Now, 
who wants to put a bunch of money sitting in a pool when there's no liquidations? And as you can see here, well, while it's sitting idle and there is no liquidations, they were going to put these like extra die or whatever, this extra, these extra tokens into yield bearing protocols such as like urine volts or compound or, or wherever they, they decide, right? So that pretty much covers the two systems there. There is one more aspect that I wish to talk about and that is this liquidity mining phase two. And this is currently active and as you can see, it's going to last for three months until September 18th, or sorry, starting on September 18th, so that's September, October, November, December. And it's now November, so there's still one more month of this. And how does this work? There's two key things here, okay? So if we look at this, people who use version one, right? which is maker and, and compound. This is, it's a little bit confusing. Don't think of it so much as like the B, the AMA that I talked about, about the big pool of money that we're gonna use for liquidations. Think of this more of like these different protocols. I will show you the website and I will talk a little bit about the difference between uh, these two when I go to the website. But if you use the, uh, if you use the liquidity or the B protocol, then you're going to be getting some KPI options. Now what this means is it's basically a, uh, a reward system. They're going to give you some of these B Pro tokens. So they took a whole bunch of B Pro tokens, they locked them into a KPI option, and based on these perimeters, uh, you can you can read them. But based on TVL, if TVL grows to uh, past 150 million by the end of this period, uh, then they're going to give out the entire amount of those KPIs to the people who participated. And so if you look here, if you borrow, if you, uh, sorry, if you lend, so sorry, if you borrow, you get 80%, and if you just lend, you get 20%. So if you just put ETH into Maker, you're going to get 20% of the, like a 20% of this, the, the share that goes to these people. And uh, the liquidity users who, if you put it into, just put your LUSD into the stability pool through B protocol, then you're going to get uh, the full share. That's the only users that are rewarded for using liquidity. So if we go over to here, and here is the website, you can see that there are four th three things live and Aave is coming soon. So as you can see, Maker looks like what it would be if you went to Maker. It's just like a wrapper on Maker. It just has this extra sidebar, which is kind of on theme of what they're doing. And then there's Compound as well, which is basically the same thing. You can just come here and use Compound through the B protocol. And then there's Liquidity as well. Now Liquidity is different because it doesn't have the like, there's no minting of LUSD via B protocol. There's just supplying to the, to the stability pool. Now, if you do supply to the stability pool in Liquidity, um, you are going to be granted uh, several different kinds of rewards. I did do a video on liquidity and I went into it quite in depth. And if you really want to understand how liquidity works, I would suggest you to watch that video. It's going, it's, I will put a, 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 a thumbnail to it at the end of this video here. So basically if you have some LUSD and you deposit it into the stability pool, then you're rewarded with LT, uh, LQTY tokens. And if you do it via B protocol, then you're still gonna get these LQTY uh, rewards. Now that the purpose of the stability pool is to liquidate positions on liquidity that are liquidatable. So the stability pool will liquidate people and then grant you access to the ETH that you got from liquidations. So there will be sometimes after some time here, you will have some, some claiming that says like, oh, you can claim liquidity tokens and you can claim ETH and you will have a little bit less LUSD because they used your LUSD to, to liquidate and give you ETH. It's quite good actually. It's like you're buying the bottom at a discount. So it's a very good act. Supplying LUSD to the stability pool is a good play in my opinion. Now, what they're gonna do for you is they're going to take that ETH for you and sell it at the market and get you more, like compound you more LUSD. So you don't need to take care of this, this uh, ETH back to LUSD services. Now, on top of this, like I said, you're going to also get these, these uh, B Pro, uh, these B Pro KPI options for the next little while. So that's pretty much it. Um, I hope this is helpful. I hope this is useful. I would suggest you to take some time and read this docs. It's good to understand things before you use them. And uh, 
Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.